Anywhere you are sitting, anywhere you are standing, lift up your hands in thanksgiving this morning. All of you watching online, lift up your hands in thanksgiving this morning. This is the first Sunday of the last month of 2021. God has been grateful. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Now we are in December. Let the people of God lift up their voices, lift up their hands in thanksgiving. Let him hear your shouts of praise, giving him thanks for his goodness, giving him thanks for his kindness, giving him thanks for his faithfulness. He's a good God anyway where you are let's go ahead and bless and bless and bless his holy name and bless and bless and bless his holy name and bless and bless and bless his holy name in jesus name and father in the name of the lord jesus we once again thank you well thank you for blessings that money can buy well thank you for blessings that money cannot buy well thank you for the gifts of life we well, thank you for the gift of health. We well, thank you for preserving us from the beginning of this year up till now. Thank you for not allowing people to be asked. Thank you for not allowing people to ask us, where is our God? Thank you for answer prayers. Thank you for the gift of health. Thank you our bodies working. Thank you for provision. Thank you for things we can remember. Thank you for things we can remember. Thank you for battles won. Thank you battles that were won when we were aware. Thank you that battles that were won when we were not aware. Thank you for filling our mouth to the song. Thank you for giving us the final laugh. Thank you for helping us to rejoice in all seasons. As a person, as a minister, as a family, we've come to give you the glory. You deserve all the glory. You deserve all the glory. You deserve all the glory. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. If we use the whole of this service to so thank you, it will not be enough because you are good. Because because you are kind, because you are faithful. Our God is good and kind to us. You've shown up and showed up. You've done amazing things. You've done signs. You've done wonders. You've done the miracles of God. We are extremely, extremely grateful. And this morning we trust you, Lord. That's the word of God has been thought. There will be hope. There will be illumination. There will be inspiration and transformation. That the word of God will come to will bring people into a place where they are deeper in Christ, into a place where they will hear the voice of the Spirit, into a place where they will understand the purpose of God, wisdom and solution will be impacted, and they will know what next to do in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let's shout a big hallelujah. Let's shout a big hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Gradually, we're coming to the end of 2021. And like the Lord told us, it was definitely a year of new beginnings. Praise God. I said, praise God. I said, praise God. Hallelujah. We're going to still spend time in Thanksgiving. After I'm done preaching, we have, we have three segments of Thanksgiving. All of you at home, I hope you are wearing your Thanksgiving dress. If you are watching online, maybe you are, maybe you are watching online, maybe you are watching from some other country, make sure you are in your local attire. If your local attire is a suit, let's wear the suit. If it's a wrapper, let's put on the wrapper. And, you know, send me the pictures, tag me, let me see you dancing and rejoicing. All of you watching online, all of you online, just type what you're watching for me. That is Canada, it is Toronto, it is, you know, Germany, just put it there and we're just going to thank God and praise God and worship and celebrate together. And this is a good time if you want to invite all your friends to join us in this spectacular Thanksgiving service. I mean, uh, the music has been great already. Hallelujah. It's been phenomenal. Be there, everyone. Oh my God. And we're just looking forward to a greater time of Thanksgiving and praise and worship. Please note this next week, ne next, this coming tomorrow, which is, the, which is a new week. Um, a new work week, we have um, we have next level prayer and the theme of the week is no carryovers. We are declaring by the power of the Holy Spirit that there will be no carryover. And please remember that in the Lecky Church Harvesters Lecky, from Wednesday we're having a Harvester Skill Acquisition Program. It's just a simple program to empower people you know, with skills that can change their financial and business trajectory forever. If you've been wondering what next will I do, I want to to make some money. This is something I want to do. Learn the skill, get some training in how to start a business and to change your life forever. I'm so glad about next week in the Abuja Church, the 12th of December. I'm so excited. 
The reason why is that we will be praying for the we'll be praying for singles. We will be praying for singles, and more than ever, my wife is also going to join, and we'll just be having a great time. God, my wife is going to join, and Minister Manus is going to join. We're going to have a great time just sharing and loving God. And next week Sunday is also an anniversary Sunday, so there's a lot packed for you. If you were in church this Sunday, I want to send a video, a testimony of how this ministry has impacted you, and we'll just go ahead and rejoice about that. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Just before I start teaching this morning, remember, I told you that everybody should come with a list of three things that God has done for them this year, and two things are still pending. If you don't have your list, if you're watching online, remind your friends you have to get their list, because we will need the list in the course of the service. Let's turn our Bibles quickly to Psalm 103. We're going to turn to Psalm 103. Glory to God. I said glory to God. We're going to turn to Psalm 103 verse 7. Psalm 103 verse 7. This is what the Bible says. And I want to understand. And this, this morning I'm talking about how thanksgiving changed the negative. How thanksgiving changed the negative. I'm going to try to preach for the first time fully. My brother, if I cannot survive it, I'm going to take it over some junction to allow us to preach. How thanksgiving changed the negative. Psalm 103 verse 7. The Bible says, and God, he made known his way unto Moses and his act unto the children of Israel. That means that in God's doing things, there are two things. There is the ways of God, which talk about the science, the technology, the wisdom of God, the act of God at the event and the things he does. But behind the act of God, so God can make a barren woman have a child. God can cause you know, God can cause a lady that is in her 40s and people say she cannot marry to get married and be happily married. God can cause a man that was doing an income of 100,000 in a year and move him to 10 million in a year. And those things are wonderful. The Bible calls those things the acts of God. He says this in verse 7. He says that he made known his way unto Moses and the acts of God unto the children of Israel. To the general public, what they saw was the sign. To the general public, what they saw was the miracle. To the general public, what they saw was the act of God. But to Moses, what he made known was the way of God. What is the way of God? The way of God talks about the wisdom of God. He talks about the technology that backs it up. He talks about the science of what we see. So what today, what you see with people is this. A lot of people are familiar with the act of God. Some of them can even give a testimony. Some of them can even shout. But when it comes to the science of how those things happen, a lot of people do not understand it. And because they do not understand it, they are not able to repeat it. Let me give an example. Everybody uses a phone. Everybody has a phone or use a phone. And the people that use a phone, it's a wonderful thing because the phone is a product, it's the act of a phone company. But the technology behind the phone, a lot of us do not understand it. And this is what it means. So, when the phone has a problem, most of us cannot fix the phone because what we really have is a phone. The technology, the science, the intelligence behind that, we don't have it. Why am I saying this to you? A lot of Christians have seen upgrades, they've seen testing testimonies they've seen some things but the wisdom behind how that thing happened they do not have it they do not understand it and that's why when we talk about thanksgiving a lot of christians can come to church lift up their hands shake their bum move up and down and scream here and there but you know they cannot that's what they can do but when it comes to how does thanksgiving really changes something what is so powerful in thanksgiving some people ask this very valid question it doesn't make sense for me to give thanks things have not gone the way I thought they would go. I thought this was the year I would make my first hundred million. I've not gotten it. I thought this was the year I would get the approval. I've not gotten it. This was the year I would get pregnant. I've not gotten it. What is there to thank God for? And the reason what they're saying is this. I've not seen the acts of God. Why should I thank God? The people that understand the ways of God are able to accurately 
interpret the act of God. And even when there is no act of God, because they understand the ways of God, they can easily orchestrate it. They can easily orchestrate it. Go right to God. So the Bible says to the general public, they saw the act of God. They saw what God did, but Moses understood the word of God. So today we want to be able to provide you three things. Spiritual intelligence of what Thanksgiving is, how Thanksgiving works, and how Thanksgiving changes everything. By the time this teaching is over, you're going to discover three things. Number one, how Thanksgiving creates a pathway for our desire. What do I mean? There are people that have strong desires in their spirits. There are people that have strong desires for their career. There are people that have strong desires for their next level, but they do not know how to get there. We are going to show you how biblically that Thanksgiving can create for you a pathway so that you can move from where you are to where you need to be. The second thing is this. We are going to let you know how Thanksgiving amplifies productivity in our personal lives, in our jobs, and as a ministry because that's something that Thanksgiving does. And the last thing you're going to see is this. How Thanksgiving enhances focus and enhances growth in the life of of the believer. Will you turn your Bibles again to Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 15. So there are people that have been stuck and they are saying to themselves it's you know the end of the year is coming, next year is here, how do I go forward? And I'm saying to you that if you understand it, a lot of people practice Thanksgiving but a lot of people do not understand the intelligence or the spiritual intelligence and technology and Thanksgiving so they are not able to really sink in and achieve a lot. Although they are thanking God they cannot maximize the process because they do not they do not what because they do not understand it all right so the bible says in proverbs chapter 12 proverbs chapter 12 in verse 15 let's go there quickly proverbs chapter 12 in verse 15 and some of you are saying that why do i and this is a question some people are really asking why should i thank god if the things I'm asking for has not happened, why should I thank God if things have gotten worse? Some people look around and say, if they want to be genuinely honest, there is really nothing significant to thank God for. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 15. Let's look at how this works. Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 15. The Bible says this, the way of a fool is right in his own sight. And he that hackneth unto counsel is wise. He said, for a man that is foolish, he said, his way is wise in his own sight. The challenge is that it thinks that this is how he's going to get the result, but that thing cannot bring him the result. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 15. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 15. This is what the Bible says here. The Bible says, the labor of the foolish man wearieth every one of them, because it does not know how to go to the city. So, this is what the Bible is saying. Most of the time when people have a desire, maybe you're going through a marital crisis and what you want is marital peace. The gap between what you want and where you are is a wisdom gap. Maybe what you want is a funding for your business. The gap between what you want and all where you are is a wisdom gap. Maybe you're trying to scale in a business. The gap between where you are and what you want is a wisdom gap. And the Bible says the challenge is this, that the labor, I know you're working very hard to scale. I know you're working very hard to move to the next level. I know you're working very hard to change your finances. But Ecclesiastes chapter 10 says something here. He says that, what does he say? He said the labor and the effort of the foolish. It gets the foolish person tired. Why? Because he does not know the way to the city. He does not know the way to the city. The core reason why people are stuck is because they do not know how. The core reason why people are stuck is because they do not know how. The human mind becomes stuck when it doesn't know how. Someone says, okay, I agree with you, but how does this affect Thanksgiving? This is what Thanksgiving does. This is what Thanksgiving does. When you begin to thank God for something, this is what it does. Thanksgiving makes familiar the, the unknown. Thanksgiving what makes familiar the unknown. What does that mean? When something is not familiar to you, you can very hardly attract it. So, it cannot easily come into your life. So, when you are in the place of Thanksgiving, 
Because in the place of prayer, you are demanding and asking for something. In the place of prayer, given the it's changed. What happens in the place of thanksgiving is very serious. He said, in the place of thanksgiving, you are not asking. In the place of thanksgiving, you are acknowledging that the very thing you are asking for has really happened in your life. And that is what changes every single thing. You acknowledging that this thing I'm asking is right there in my life. And let me give an example. When the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 4, the Bible says that when Abraham had waited for about 20 years, he didn't have a child, that Abraham began to give thanks to God. What was he doing? It was strange for him to have a child. The place of thanksgiving is where you make what is not familiar, familiar. And this is it. Once you make it familiar, then the pathway will evolve. Once you make it familiar, the pathway will evolve. Look at the story of Mary. The angel told Mary, he said, Mary, you're going to have a child. And Mary had a problem. He said, Angel, you don't understand. I'm a virgin lady. If I had sex before in my life, you could have said maybe the residual sex in my system will become a child. But I've never known a man in my system that reads no kind of sperm that can be used to become a child. And the angel told her. This is what the angel said. He said, go and see your what? Go and see your cousin Elizabeth. Why did he say go and see Elizabeth? The reason why was that because Elizabeth had experienced her own kind of miracle. What the angel was saying is this. What you want, let's make it familiar to you. A lot of people are praying for a certain increase. A lot of people are praying for a certain expansion. A lot of people are praying for a church's state of level. The challenge is not what they are praying for. The challenge is that the state they want is not familiar to them. And so although they are putting energy, they cannot have it because it's not familiar. The first thing the angel told Mary was this. You are going to get pregnant. You are going to have that thing. But before you can have it, you need to get familiar with it. He said, pack your things, go and meet Elizabeth. As soon as he met Elizabeth, Elizabeth had an experience and she also had an experience. When God wants to change your level, please pay attention. What he does is this. What you are praying for, he begins to make familiar to you. He begins to make familiar to you. He begins to make familiar to you. That's how you know God wants to change your level. The first thing is that it will send a word with that thing in it. He will send a prophetic word. Many of you are here and you say, okay, things are not going so well. Why should I thank God? This is why you are thanking God. As you are thanking God, you are making familiar what is not your life. And you are in that process pulling it in. If I were you, even though you don't have the contract for 280 million, I will begin to thank God for it. You know why? As I begin to thank God, I am pulling it in. I am what? Pulling it in. I am pulling it in. I've said to you over and over again, I said the human mind cannot decipher between reality and what friction. That's why when you watch a movie and you're in the cinema and they're shooting you, you start dodging as if the movie is real. Of course, you know the movie is friction, but the human mind cannot decipher that. The same thing in Thanksgiving. As you thank God over and over again, your human mind cannot even decipher if what you thank God for has really happened or it has not happened. And guess what that does for you? What that does for you is that once the human mind can embrace it, I tell you something, that in the physical, we attract our mental equivalent by time. What it can enter into your mind, it will enter into your life. Once it can enter into your mind. So what does Thanksgiving do? This is why people that say there's nothing to thank God for, I will not thank God for anything, you are shortchanging yourself. You know why? In the place of thanksgiving, you make familiar what is not present. And once that thing can enter into your mind, it will enter into your life. That was why this, this thing, this principle is very, 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 very powerful. I'm telling you, this principle is very powerful. When they were going to go into the promised land, God told them to send forth men first to bring the fruit of the promised land. You know why? Because when they brought forth the fruit, it's a way of them experiencing the promised land without being in the promised land. What does that mean? If you're a single lady, you will go into Thanksgiving and begin to thank God for your marriage day, begin to thank God for your wedding day, begin to thank God for, the, for, for your marriage. As you're doing that, you're pulling that experience closer to you. If you're a businessman and you've been doing business in the realms of 50 million, 100 million, you're going to a place of thanksgiving, not because you have seen it, but what you're doing is that in the place of thanksgiving, through thanksgiving, you are making really your spirit was not there. Are you here, somebody? Are you here, somebody? Are you here, somebody? 
You know what the Bible says in the book of John? He says the voice of a stranger they will not follow. You know what that means? He says that when there are many voices, people will follow the voice of the one they're familiar to. What does that mean to you? If you are not familiar with the next level you, you want, when the voice comes and says, go this way, you'll not go that way. Not because you don't want the next level, but you are not familiar with it. But in the place of thanksgiving, this is what you do. You, are, you become familiar with what you desire by giving thanks, by giving thanks, by giving thanks. When that voice comes, not because you are at that level, but because you are used to eating thanksgiving, you just go that way. And people will ask you, how come you took that decision? You say, I don't even know why. But the reason why is that through Thanksgiving, you've conditioned your mind for a higher level. All your friends are still playing on shallow waters in business. All your friends are still playing in that area when it comes to pregnancy. You have gone to a higher level. And they wonder, how did you change level? The reason why, as you began to thank God, there was a change of state. And when the internal, internal state changes, the external change, state will change. If I were you today, when it's time for Thanksgiving, I'm going to bust out. And the very thing you think I will not thank God for, I will go into Thanksgiving. I will shout, I will sing, because in my spirit, I'm drawing it closer to me. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. And this is what happens. Eh? This is what I'm seeing. The moment your mind has accepted, and this is very powerful. <laughs> I did this in church some time ago, and I'll do it again. If I come here and I start talking about food, how last year, I had lamb, um, last, um, some days ago, I had the succulent lamb chops with what they call it barbecue sauce on it. The rice was firewood rice. What happens to you? All of a sudden, what I'm selling, you begin to smell and feel it. Is that not happening to you right now? That's what I'm saying. The moment it enters your heart, through things, even what your level, next level is, this, this next level happened. This one happened. The moment it enters your heart, the next step you have to take will become obvious to you. And that's what I'm going to. The reason why people are stuck is that they are taking next steps and pathways that cannot lead to their goals. They are taking pathways and steps that cannot lead to their future. But once you enter into a place of thanksgiving, you know what happens? It will flood open. You will just say, okay, I know what to do now. And how do you know what to do? You know what to do because your mind has engulfed it. Your mind has captured it. Somebody say hallelujah. The next thing Thanksgiving does is this. Let's turn our Bibles quickly. Let's turn our Bibles quickly. One of the things Thanksgiving does. Let's Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. So, yeah, Mark chapter 4. I hope you're warming up for your Thanksgiving. Mark chapter 4. Verse 28. And this is what the Bible says. The Bible says, for the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself. Take note of this. Let me show you. It says, this is the way the earth works. When it says the earth, you know Mark chapter 4, Mark chapter 4 already explains to us that the earth in that verse is metaphoric, that what is really talking about is what is the human heart. Is what? The human heart. Because the human, the human heart is like an engine. He says, the earth by itself will bring forth fruits. That means that if you want a promotion inside, you can bring it forth. If you want a child on the inside, you can bring it forth. He says the human heart itself will bring forth fruit. The human heart on the inside will bring forth fruit. So this is, let's look at Proverbs chapter 16 verse 9. Yeah. Proverbs chapter 16 verse 9. He says a man's heart devises his ways. What does that mean? He says, what you become, the device that produce your wealth, the device that produce your relationship, the device that produce everything you will be is the human heart. He says, the human heart devises way. That means if you are thinking of death, your heart will produce death for you. If your heart is thinking of increase, it will produce it for you. So this is what I'm saying with a powerful way. So the Bible says the human, that the human heart will produce by itself. The human heart will produce by itself. So the question is this, and this I'm going to. Someone says that, well, I'm tired of life. Someone says that, how come I, how, how come I want this and I get that? The human heart does not produce what you want. It produces what you sow. The human heart does not produce what you want. It produces what you sow. What does that mean? You may want to get married as a single man or as a single girl, but the continually seed you sow in your heart is that getting married is difficult. 
It will not produce what you want. It will produce what you set to it. You may want to increase your business to maybe a 500 million naira annual income. But what you are always saying to yourself and doing, a business in the dimension of 2 or 3 million. You may want a change of job or approval. But the seed you sow in your heart are the seed of, this, um, uh, of cancellation of seeds that will work against that. The human mind does not produce what you want. It produces what you sow. So what you have today is a function of the human heart. So why is things even very important? And this is why it's very important. Can I get the cup? Can I get the cup? Can I get the cup? I wanted to pay attention to this, this, this dispenser. The human heart is like an engine, like every other engine. When you use an engine over time, it begins to lose efficiency. Let me give an example. If you have a blender at home, you have a clipper at home, you have a car. When you use the car, you bought a brand new car. After about three years, you will see that the car's efficiency will begin to, do, to, to reduce. The car will not become as effective as it used to be. The human heart can deliver for you that which you want. But what happens over time is this, and this is what people don't understand. They will wonder how come things are not going well. The reason why is this. If you buy a car, you drive a car, it's working at a top speed. After three years, the car will not be able to go at that top speed again. Now it might be shaky. Not because of anything. It's just because of wear and tear. The same thing with the human heart. The human heart can produce you promotion. The human heart can produce you increase. The human heart can produce you a lot of things. But because of wear and tear, what is wear and tear? You have experienced some delay. You have experienced some, you know, some delays. You have seen some problems. The capacity of the human heart becomes weak. In fact, the Bible calls the state of the heart sometimes a fallow ground. This is what happens. So just imagine that this is a human heart. This dispenser is a human heart. The human heart has water in it, life. So it's always giving life to your vision. So if this is you, you are dreaming of doing something, it will give life to it. It's giving life to your marital vision. It's giving life to your health. It's giving life to your vision. So every time there's something, the human heart will give some life to it. It will give life. So as it's giving life, you can see here, the water is going to the cup. It's giving life. It's giving life. It's giving life. It's giving life. You know what's going to happen some time? After some time, this water dispenser is going to become empty. And when you are putting demand on the water dispenser, it will not dispense life, not because it's not effective, but because it needs replenishment. Because it what needs replenishment. So many of you, you are in a state where your heart, because it's your heart that produces the job, it's your heart that produces the increase, you just wonder that, ah, why am I feeling stuck? And you are fasting, and you are praying, and you are putting pressure. But no life is coming out of the dispenser as it used to come before. Before you conclude that God is not faithful, I want to recommend to you, go back to your the dispenser and replenish it. And what is happening to us is this. A lot of people, just because of the challenges they've gone through, maybe they've gone through a delay or disappointment, their heart is broken, their heart is weak. And the Bible says the way this works is this. It says the earth, the heart itself, will bring forth of itself. If you want to get pregnant, it says, how do you get pregnant? He said, the heart, the human spirit will bring forth the baby. If you want to get an expansion, it says, the heart will bring forth the expansion. So you find out that I'm desiring an expansion, I'm desiring an increase, but it's not happening that way. Why is it not happening that way? The reason why is that because your heart has gone through, you've been through some disappointment, you've been through some delays, you've been through some denial, your heart has just been injured. And what you need is replenishment. How do you replenish your heart? The place of thanksgiving is the place where the heart is renewed. Let me give you this way. If you keep using a piece of soil to farm every year, you will notice that after some time, the products that come from the soil will start reducing in quant quality and quantity. The reason why is that the nutrients of the heart have been used up and you need a frame of time to just let the what? The soil rest so that the heart can be strong again. Some of you, it's not as if your prayer is not working, but you have become weak on the inside. You have become weak because you've been waiting to get mine for five years. You, you could not get that capital fund there was a disappointment in your business you lost something, the government closed down something, something went wrong at work and your inner capacity to believe God is shrinking and what you need to do is not to put pressure on it, it's just to allow the heart to get the nutrient in farming when you farm continuously they will say live one year and let the earth gather itself together the same with the natural, we need to let the earth gather together in the spirit, we need to let our heart 
gather together. How does our heart gather together? In the place of thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is what makes the heart gather together. It's what brings the nutrient. Have you seen people that were very strong before, very hopeful before, they become very discouraged, they become very depressed, they become very negative and they are wondering what's going on. Listen to me, it's nothing going on, it's that the state of your heart has changed because you think things change on the outside. No, sir. The real change stay from the inside. The things on the outside are always the same. When you find yourself discouraged, when you find yourself depressed, when you find yourself going through a tough time, what has really changed that on the inside something has changed. When Peter began to sink, when Jesus called him to walk upon the water, there was nothing that was different. The same waves were there, the same ships were there, the same water was there. The difference, the only difference was this, that Peter's state of heart had changed. He had moved from looking to Jesus, he had begun to see the waters and the waves, fear had entered and he began to sink. Some of you, you are sinking in your faith right now. Some of you, you are sinking in your belief right now. Your faith that your business succeeds is sinking. Your faith that you get the approval is sinking. Your faith that you get married is sinking. As we are saying, thank God, you say there's nothing to thank God for and you think that something has changed on the outside, which while in reality, what has changed is the state of your heart. And listen to this, if anything must change, it must change from within. What do you do? What you do is simple. If the water dispenser has run out of water, we will refill it so that it can give life. If your life is drained, if life has been drained from you, from your heart, we will refill it. How do we refill it? Psalm 65. And this will be our final, this will be, I believe, our final scripture. Psalm 65. Oh, glory to God. Psalm 6 to 5 in verse 5. And many of you are wondering, I'm doing the same thing. Why is there a reduction in productivity? Because the heart is drained. The things are not working the way they used to work because the heart is drained. Psalm 6 to 5 verse 5. See what the Bible says here. Psalm 6 to 5 verse 5. He says this. Psalm 6 to 7 rather. Verse 5. This is what it says. He said, let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Why? He says, then shall the earth yield an increase. He says that I know you've been praying about some things, but your heart is weak and that's why the marriage is stolen. I know you've been praying about some things, but on the inside you are not strong. That's why the business is not moving forward. He says, how do you make the heart to gain back nutrients? He said, as we begin to praise him, there will be a supernatural operation in the spirit in the heart. He said, then the earth will yield an increase and once the earth begins to yield, once something happens, oh my God, that's why no matter what is happening to you, what has gone on well or what has not gone on well, as you begin to praise him and your heart, and let me tell you something, this Thanksgiving is not about a service. This Thanksgiving is about a lifestyle. You will wake up every day. You will go about every day and you are loading your heart. Why? The Bible says as they begin to praise him, he said then the earth shall yield an increase. If they don't praise him the earth is not able to use his increase and God, even our God shall bless thee. The Bible says and God shall bless you and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Ladies and gentlemen, when you understand Thanksgiving, you will know that when you are going through the most difficult time in your life, it's your only best friend. I'm telling you. You know why? Because once that negative thing cannot enter your heart, it can't enter your life. What will help you all is the Thanksgiving. And Thanksgiving is powerful. I'm telling you. That's why you can never see a thankful person that is depressed. And that's why you notice a lot of people that are successful are very thankful people. And a lot of people that are poor and struggling are people that complain a lot and murmur a lot. Because there are some things that attract angels and attract the influence of, of God. You know what Thanksgiving does to you? Thanksgiving makes you resourceful. You know why? Thanksgiving makes you resourceful. As you are thankful over what you have, in spite of the opportunity, the way to use what you have to get what you want to become obvious to you. 
That was why when they took the five loaves and two fishes, the apostle said, we have five loaves and two fishes, but what is this among so many? What he was saying is that I have a job, but what is this a job to a, amongst my vision? You know, some of you are saying, I have something, but it's not enough. Some of you, it's not as if you don't have something, but it's not significant. Jesus Christ said, you don't understand this works. Bring the insignificant, sir. Once you are grateful about the insig insignificant, thanksgiving make you resourceful. It will show you how that insignificant can what pull down a mountain. So, what was going to happen was that Saul was going to tell David, David, what you have is not working. Take my armor. For Saul, it doesn't work that way, sir. If I'm thankful over my stones, my stone can pull down Goliath. I don't know what stones are to you. Maybe it's a small job that you have. Maybe it's a small healing that you have. But if you are thankful full over that thing. It's a pull down Goliath. Thanksgiving changed the state of your heart. That's why if you are, listen, people that are thankful when they are going through things, their coping mechanism and capacity is phenomenal. You will not even know they are going through things. And the reason why is that Thanksgiving has the capacity to expand their coping thing. If you cry a lot about problems, it's just a proof that you are not thankful. What does Thanksgiving do? Thanksgiving conditions the heart and amplifies for productivity. As we close today, how do you become thankful? It's a decision. It's first a decision. And saying, you know what? Thanksgiving is not what we do on Sunday. It's not what we do once in a year. It's a lifestyle. And say from today. You know why? Because in my personal life, this is what I've learned. When my life is very difficult, I will take barren paper and start writing to thank God for. You know why? When I begin to write things, then go for. I will create a reference for my mind to begin to walk. And the more I see what the Lord did, the more it does for me. Later, I will say, the more you are grateful for what God is doing, the more it multiplies what's in your life. You have moved abroad right now. Are you grateful for the opportunity? Or you are there and you are saying that ah, I forgot it because the human mind is naturally ungrateful. And the thing in life is this. What, once you are grateful, you will have many things to be grateful for. Hallelujah. If you are thankful, your tank will be full. If you are thankful, your tank will be full. How do you become thankful? The first thing is this, and this is what I do from time to time. I, will ha I have a journal. I will write things I'm thankful for. What are you thankful for? Write the names of, the names of people you are thankful for. Write the names of events you are thankful for. Write the names of things you are thankful for. Go to God in prayers and thank him in a significant way. If you cannot reflect, you can't be thankful. You begin to thank him that way. The second thing that happens to thanks even is this. You would look amongst people and testify and say, this is what the Lord has done. The third thing about Thanksgiving is this. It must come out in your singing and dancing. So this morning as we sing, dance, and shout, either you are online or you are online, I don't know where you are, but you are going to sing and shout because that's your expression. And the last thing in Thanksgiving is that we are going to express our Thanksgiving in our giving. And many people have not learned this. I'm telling you, many people have not learned this. They come to the house of the Lord empty and in Thanksgiving. That's not what you do. The Bible says when Solomon was made a king, that day he offered 1,000 birth offerings. You would go forward and say, Father, you know it's amazing. There will be people that will have a child and they will say their Thanksgiving offering is 1,000 naira. And meanwhile, you will watch a movie for 10,000. What are you grateful for? You will use 1,000 as Thanksgiving offering, 5,000 as Thanksgiving offering. Meanwhile, the God, that's to God that gave you the baby. The humans that came to eat, you will use 1 million to cook for them. What are you grateful to? When you want to be grateful, it must show in your heart. It must show in your body and it must show in your pocket. And say, Father, I'm grateful. And say, Father, I'm grateful. Father, I'm grateful. As a family, you have a family Thanksgiving offering that we're giving as a family. Something that significantly touches you as a person. Thanksgiving. Why? Once you become thankful, the things you thank him for will multiply. One of the most powerful things, and let me just say this as I close, is that Thanksgiving makes you resourceful. Let me tell you what resourceful is. Resourceful does not mean that the problem goes away. Because when Jesus Christ took the five loaves and two fishes, it was still insufficient. The crowd was still there. But what resourceful does is this. The intelligence of heaven comes upon you. And all of a sudden, what was not enough becomes overwhelmingly enough to solve the problem and give you a miracle. That way, you are resourceful. Everybody bring out your list anywhere you are. And what I want to go is to go over them. Number one, all of you online, the same thing. Number two, 
Go over them, number three. And go over them over and over again. Go over them over and over again. And this one wants to do stand on your feet and lift up your hands and give him thanks. Stand on your feet, lift up your hands and give him thanks. He deserves all the glory. Stand on your feet, lift up your hands and give him thanks. Stand on your feet, lift up your hands and give him thanks. He deserves all the glory. Thanksgiving is more than singing and dancing. It's from the heart. So stand on your feet, give him thanks. Let your voices ascend unto heaven. Let's go ahead and thank him. Oh, Varashina Kwatike Bezuzumina Patoki Ataha. Kumbe Shigalamando Krosidi Hata. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I want to lift up your hands towards heaven. And I'm just going to pray and close the service. And listen, what we're going to I'm going to close pray and close the message. And after this, we're going to have our specific Thanksgiving. We are going to come out in three orders. Number one, the general thanksgiving, everybody just thanking God. The second thing is that we're going to come out for those that have grown spiritually or had spiritual experiences. And the third one are people that have specific thanksgiving. I got a promotion this year. I got a salary increase this year. I bought a car this year. I moved to a flat this year. I got married this year. I got engaged this year. We're going to take those thanksgiving at this point. Are we ready, everybody? Thank you, Jesus. Let's go ahead. And Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, today we just come to give you thanks. We have come to give you thanks for who you are. You have done enough. You have blown our minds. You've done more than man can do. We are significantly and eternally grateful. Heavenly Father, as a person, I thank you. As a church family, as an online family, we thank you. Thank you. Thank you for NLP. Thank you for the testimonies. Thank you for the wonders. Thank you for January, for Mar February, for March, for April, for May, for June, July, August, September, October, November. Thank you that this was a year that swallowed many people, but you preserved our lives. Thank you for blessing us beyond our mountain stream. Father, thank you for causing tears to become joy. Thank you for all Lord, filling our mouth with testimonies. Ah, Father, thank you for doing above and beyond. Father, thank you for never failing us, showing that you answer prayers. Ah, Father, we are grateful. As a family, as a unit, as a church, we are faithful. We are grateful, Lord. We are grateful, Lord. Lift up your voice and say we are grateful. All of you online, type in the boxes, I am grateful, Jesus. Lift up your voices and bless his holy name. And in Jesus' name, name we pray amen praise the lord hallelujah glory to god i'm going to take the titan offering and we're going to take the next proceeding about our, our titan um, about our thanksgiving if you want to type the details are on the screen if you want to give your offering it's on the screen also if you're online or in the physical site and you want to give it's right there god wants us to honor him with our tithes and our offerings so let's go ahead and receive that right now and you have not been a titan Christian, it's an opportunity for you to change and make that decision and say, Lord, I mean, how can 2021 go and you don't even have one or two months where you have tightened? You need to change that. You need to change that trajectory. And let's go ahead and pray. By titan, stand to your feet as our culture is. If you're giving your offering, raise up your offering as we pray. And Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we want to thank you for the opportunity to bring our titan offerings to you. Your promise that the liberal soul be made fast will receive the blessing and the promise of the liberal soul. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You can go ahead and give. They will direct us how to give. We'll welcome the first timers and proceed into our Thanksgiving service. This will be fabulous. If this message has blessed you, share with me online. Tag me. Show me how you are dressed. Show me how you are dancing. I would love to see you. God bless you.